Hey everyone, I'm Trevor, and today we're gonna share with you the best quick service meal from every restaurant at Disneyland. So let's get going. And we are gonna start our walking tour of the best quick service meals at Disneyland, right here at Refreshment Corner on Main Street. Now, up until recently, I actually haven't eaten a whole lot of meals at this place, but thanks to the hot dog video, we actually tried quite a few things from Refreshment Corner. But strangely enough, or maybe not if you know me and my dislike for hot dogs in general, my favorite thing at Refreshment Corner is actually none of the hot dogs. It is the mac and cheese sourdough bread bowl, uh, but specifically the one with chili in it. So mac and cheese chili. That one is an amazing combination that I highly recommend. If you are gonna get something from Refreshment Corner, it needs to be the mac and cheese chili in a sourdough bread bowl. Now, of course, there are all sorts of foods at these places. We're not covering snacks and drinks. We're mostly just looking at the quick service meals. If you're gonna go somewhere to have a meal, what are you gonna get? And naturally, we'll go right next door to Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe next. Well, because it's only a few steps away, of course. If you are a longtime viewer on the channel, there is no surprises here. My favorite item from Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe is the Jolly Holiday combo that comes with that amazing tomato basil soup. I think the soup might possibly be one of the best things at the entire park. But uh, if I have to take it a step further, it's going to be one of the specialty versions of the Jolly Holiday combo. Right now they have the Berea toasted cheese and oh, is that so very good. But they've also had a bulgogi toasted cheese in the past. Both of them are phenomenal. If you have a chance to grab one of these specialty varieties of the Jolly Holiday combo, make sure you do it. And now we'll pop across the street over to the Plaza Inn. Right now, the Plaza Inn is currently a character breakfast. It'll switch over to lunch at noon and be their quick service from lunch and dinner. Now, I don't eat here all that often, but I feel like the automatic winner has to go to the Plaza Inn's fried chicken platter. Uh, it's a bit pricey, but everyone swears by it. I mean, the last time I had it was maybe six to eight months ago. I'm not that wild about fried chicken, even though I lived in the South for eight years. I lived in Florida. Uh, still not my favorite thing. So yes, it's good. It is, and it's probably the best thing that they have, of course, but um, I don't know, I will eat somewhere else. We're gonna go the other way for once and start off in Tomorrowland for our loop around the park. And our first restaurant in Tomorrowland is gonna be Alien Pizza Planet. Uh, now this one's a bit of a mixed bag for folks who <laughs> visit Disneyland. Um, me and my family don't really mind it all that much, but we never get the pizza. The best item here is going to be the Countdown Shrimp Fusilli. That is the best thing that you can get. The chicken one is good too, but the shrimp is the better version of the two. And they do have some other decent pasta dishes, but uh, the Countdown Shrimp Fusilli has never led us astray. Please, please, please though, avoid their pizza at all cost. One of my favorite things about that pasta dish is that it's very splittable. And so we'll order one for our kids and it is more than enough pasta for both of them. Uh, adults, it's gonna depend on how hungry you are and how much you've been snacking throughout the day, but it is a great option. Now we're coming up on Galactic Grill here. Now, Galactic Grill is a quick service location with an ever-changing menu. It's highly dictated by the season. Their menu almost always changes, like everything. Entrees, uh, snacks, drinks, everything, depending on the season. There's not a whole lot that sticks around from season to season, except their American breakfast burrito in the morning. And it's probably one of the best things that they sell, even so. Like, their burgers here are just not that great. So I would avoid the burgers. Sometimes the specialty sandwiches they have are pretty good. Avoid the regular burgers, but if you want something good and consistent, the American breakfast burrito at breakfast time is a good one. Now, when you come to Disneyland, you are going to be doing a lot of walking. In fact, when I come here to film, I do an average of 25,000 to 30,000 steps a day. Now, I'm probably walking a bit more than some of you, but it's still a lot of walking. And so you need to have good, comfortable shoes. And a 
few weeks ago, a rep from a shoe company I'd never heard of before reached out to me. The brand is called Fitville, and they asked if I would like a free pair of shoes to give a try and let you guys know about it. So I said yes, and I was able to pick out my own pair, go on their website, pick whatever pair I liked. So it's not like they're giving me, you know, the best pair of the lot. But I picked a, a pair of walking shoes, of course, because I do a lot of walking. And from the moment that I slipped them on my foot, I noticed the how comfortable they were. I actually let out an audible, oh wow, like it was super comfortable. And in the last couple of weeks, I've probably put over 200,000 steps on these shoes. I do an average of about 15,000 steps a day, even at home. We do a lot of walking just for recreation, for fun, that sort of thing. And uh, the shoes feel just as comfortable now as they did when I put them on for the very first time. And I absolutely love them. They're my new favorite pair of shoes. Again, the brand is Fitville. I'm gonna put a link down in the description where you can go to their website. And if you use my coupon code that they gave me, you can save, I believe it is 28% on your purchase order. So that's a pretty great deal, isn't it? Uh, give their website a, a look, see if there's some shoes that, that stick out to you and use my coupon code to save some money. Oh, and lest you think that I'm just pushing them up just because any longtime viewer of the channel will be able to tell you down in the comments, we do honest reviews here. I have no problem saying when things are bad and I genuinely love these shoes. Speaking of telling you when things are bad, <laughs> Cafe Daisy is not one of my favorite places to come to Disneyland to get something to eat. However, there is an item on the menu that I have yet to try that might be pretty decent. And that is gonna be this year, Daisy's Dressed Up Dog. Now I have no idea how we missed this when we did our hot dog video, probably because when we came for opening day, we ordered like one of everything that they had and that was not there. So this is a recent-ish addition. I have got the pizza flop over. That's the best thing I've tried. But uh, Daisy's Dressed Up Dog, I hear pretty good things about. So maybe that's the one that you should give a shot at. Perhaps the worst thing on the menu is the uh, little veggie wrap thing. Uh, Amy tried it, didn't like it. And uh, just a kind of a word on that. Um, somebody told me in the comments uh, a couple of weeks ago that they felt like we were kind of harsh on the vegan foods. And I actually find that uh, a lot of vegan options are, are pretty good. I, I love the Felution Kefta from Docking Bay 7. Uh, I love the Impossible Spoonful from uh, Pim Test Kitchen over at Disney California Adventure. I, I really do. I, I like the shawarmas, the Impossible Falafel. Uh, over there as well. So there are a lot of vegan options I like, but that back there at Cafe Daisy is not one of them. As far as Troubadour Tavern is concerned, I had this all filmed out to tell you about the Serengeti Stew, which has been an item that's been on the menu for quite a long time since Tale of the Lion King, and even after that show ended, it's still been on the menu. And then of course, Disney goes and announces two days after I film this that they are changing the menu. Of course, it's gonna be for Pixar Fest, and we're taking a look at the website right now to show you what is coming to Troubadour Tavern but because I haven't actually tried any of these things, I can't tell you what the best item is. However, I can tell you that the item I am most interested in is the Roundup Barbecue Potato. So uh, we'll have to give it a try once Pixar Fest is here and let you know for certain, but check back on the channel later. And next up is Red Rose Tavern. And if I have to pick one meal from this location to say is the best, it's probably gonna be the pepperoni flatbread. I've tried the lamb flatbread, which I thought would be better, but I didn't really like it very much. It's a spiced lamb. I think the spices on it are a little overpowering. The burgers here are just standard theme park burgers, so your options are quite limited. Now the best item on the menu, uh, that is gonna go to the gray stuff. But this is not a snack video, this is a quick service meal video, so we're gonna go with the pepperoni flatbread. And um, yeah, give it a shot if that's what you're looking for. Now we are entering a frontier land. And first we are going to stop by Rancho Del Zocalo. Now this is one of my favorite restaurants at Disneyland, so it's so hard to pick the best item. But actually the best isn't even on the menu anymore. They got rid of it. I had it last year. If you ever see the green chili cheese nachos pop back up on the menu, run, don't walk to get them. They're that good. 
However, the burrito Sonora with beef is always a trusty, tried and true option for my family. We love it, it's packed with flavor, but truthfully, you can't go wrong with anything from this restaurant. The same cannot be said for its neighbor, the Golden Horseshoe. This one is easily my least favorite restaurant at Disneyland. The best thing on their menu is probably the mozzarella sticks, but that's not a meal. So if I have to pick a meal, it's gonna be the chicken tenders, which is also coincidentally like the worst thing on their menu. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. And next door to the Golden Horseshoe is Stage Door Cafe, which has virtually the same foods. And for Stage Door, the best item on the menu is gonna be the fish and chips. Now, you can get fish and chips at Golden Horseshoe as well. Just when I was building out this list ahead of time, I put the fish and chips here. So, uh, Golden Horseshoe can't have it, of course, because, well, Stage Door Cafe took it. Uh, Stage Door Cafe also has corn dogs that uh, Golden Horseshoe does not have. So it's another little bit of a difference. And they have funnel cakes. This is not a full food guide though. So I'm just, yeah, fish and chips. We are entering into the back way of Adventureland and we're going to a Bengal barbecue. And Bengal barbecue behind me is definitely in the top three of quick service restaurants here at Disneyland. The best item on the menu, in my opinion, are the Banyan beef skewers. They are quite spicy. So if you're not given to spice, the Bengal beef skewers are also phenomenal. Um, the only thing I would say to steer clear of from this place are the tiger tail breadsticks. Otherwise, I really, this is another one where you just can't go wrong with anything. First up in New Orleans Square is Royal Street Veranda. They don't have a whole lot of options here. My favorite thing of all of the things that I've eaten at Royal Street Veranda, however, is the clam chowder in a sourdough bread bowl. Uh, you'll notice that there are sourdough bread bowls a lot on this list because they're really good. And uh, the clam chowder is a can't miss if you're gonna eat at Royal Street Veranda. Now, passing by on my left here is the seating area for Cafe Orleans, which is a sit-down table service restaurant. And I know I said that we were not going to include table service restaurants on this or the video, but we have eaten here enough times and gotten pretty much everything on the menu. And it's probably no surprise that the best item at Cafe Orleans is their classic Monte Cristo sandwich with a side of pan frites. That is the way to go. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. It is amazing. It really is. Like, uh, if you're gonna go to a table service restaurant, it needs to be Cafe Orleans. And what you're gonna order, you are going to order the Monte Cristo. Yes, you are. Tiana's Palace is right next door to Cafe Orleans. This is Disneyland's newest restaurant that opened in September of 2023. At this point, I have tried just about everything on the menu here, and 85% uh, of it is not that great. However, the house gumbo, the item that they're most known for, or it's like their signature dish, if you will, is exceptionally good. It's the one thing that I would recommend getting above all else. And if you order a side of their baked mac and cheese, I also really, really love that too. So I think the problem with Tiana's Palace is that it, it's very close to authentic New Orleans food, but it's not close enough. And everybody who's had that authentic Cajun flavors um, is like, eh, this doesn't, this doesn't measure up. Of course, Disney always tries to um, make the palate of their food items um, more acceptable. Like, you know what I mean? It, it's got to be open to a wider variety of people. And so they can't have it be like super authentic, but then that makes them miss the mark. I don't know, I'm rambling. Do you get the idea though? Now, even though we just left New Orleans Square, Harbor Galley here is actually in Frontierland because this is the harbor for the boats that are on the rivers of America. And so this little bit is in Frontierland. And this is gonna have basically the same things as Royal Street Veranda, however, they do have a little bit more. And since we put the clam chowder in the other restaurant, this one's gotta be the lobster roll. Hands down, the best item at Harbor Galley is gonna be that delicious lobster roll. Next up, we come to Hungry Bear Restaurant in Critter Country. Amy helped me curate the best foods for this video. And when I initially asked her, what's the best item at Hungry Bear Restaurant? She said to me, none of it. <laughs> 
Um, but when we took a closer look at the menu, the closest thing that we could come up with is they have a spiced honey chicken sandwich right now. Now we haven't gotten that specific item. We got like a honey fried chicken sandwich or something like that, uh, or spicy fried chicken sandwich in the past. Here's a, a quick clip of it. It is definitely not the item that's on the menu right now, but um, everything else that we've had here is, is just, it's, it's not that great. I mean, uh, as you go around Disneyland, there are some places that have amazing food. And then there are some places that just have your standard theme park food because, well, you know, some people are gonna only want a burger or chicken tenders and that sort of thing. And maybe you're even in that boat. And so Hungry Bear Restaurant might be perfect for you. But if you wanna be a bit more adventurous with your food options, you wanna try some things that are uniquely Disneyland, Hungry Bear Restaurant is not it. And after Critter Country, we naturally stepped into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge for our last two quick service restaurants. And in my opinion, some of the best that Disneyland has to offer. Boba Fett, Boba Fett. I feel like we've been seeing Boba a lot lately. And here we are, Ronto Roaster. But we're gonna step outside. It's a bit noisy in there. Anyhow, Ronto Roasters, I've had every single item on this menu. There are three different Ronto items. And the Ronto Less Garden Wrap, however, is the best item at Ronto Roasters, hands down. It's available both at breakfast and lunch and dinner, so it's, it's available all the time. Uh, you guys aren't kidding. You, you've been recommending it on the channel multiple times. I had it for the second time just this morning as part of our Season of the Force video that you can check out uh, after this one. And it, it really is the best item at Ronto Roasters, and it is phenomenal. You can't go wrong with anything here. I love it, and I, and I get them all the time. And lastly, we come over here to Docking Bay 7. In fact, we are going to grab a bite to eat here for lunch today. Now, in previous videos, I have said that Docking Bay 7 is the best quick service restaurant at Disneyland. It's also one of the most expensive. And the, my favorite item on here, actually, the, their menu changes all the time, but uh, basically any of their beef variety dishes. Those are the good ones. Follow the beef. It might change what it looks like, it might change names, but the beef is where it's at every single time I've gotten it from here. Phenomenal. And here is just a quick look at what I am getting for Season of the Force today. This, uh, honestly, I just had a couple bites and this item could easily make it into one of the best options on the menu video as well. Uh, this is the Dewback Chili Noodles. If you want to know my full thoughts on the Dewback Chili Noodles, as well as everything to do with Season of the Force at Disneyland, which runs from April 5th to June 2nd, go ahead and click this video to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button on the way out if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you again next time.